So she was about to get married. He was hired to object. Now they work together and they go around objecting at other people's weddings. She, they have like low key fallen in love and now she has to go to a wedding to object and the wedding is for the woman that he was supposed to marry. <gasps> Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Today I'm going to be talking about some very highly anticipated releases for 2024. So if you are interested to see what I am looking forward to in terms of new releases for next year, then keep on watching. I just want to preface this video by saying that any dates that I mention in this video are all dates based on what Goodreads has listed as of the date of me filming this. I know the release dates change all the time so please do not be married to the idea that the book will actually release on these dates because things change. So in terms of like why these are like highly anticipated or on like my list of highly anticipated, most of the books on this list I would say are probably more so based on the author and how much I've liked that author's previous work or how many like rave reviews that author has gotten from other people. Most of these books I have no idea what they're even about. I'm gonna be reading the synopses for these for the first time with you guys. So here we go. First on the list is The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I have actually never read a book by Lee Bardugo but I have heard nothing but fantastic amazing wonderful things about uh, Ninth House and Hellbent but also really good things about um, Six of Crows. But yeah, I don't know what this book is about, so we're gonna find out together. It says it's a historical fantasy set during the Spanish Golden Age in a shabby house on a shabby street in the new capital of Madrid. Luisa Cotado uses scraps of magic to get through her days of endless toil as a skull, scullion? I don't know what that word means. When her scheming mistress discovers the lump of a servant is actually hiding a talent for little miracles, she demands Luisa uses those gifts to better the family's social position. What begins as a simple amusement for the bored nobility takes a perilous turn when Luisa garners the notice of Antonio Perez, the disgraced secretary to Spain's king. The king is desperate for any advantage in the war and Perez will stop at nothing to regain the king's favor. As Luisa plunges into a world of seers and alchemists where the line between magic, science, and fraud is never certain. I love that line. That just sealed the deal for me magic science and fraud i could literally just stop reading the synopsis there she will have to use every bit of her wit and will to survive even if that means enlisting the help of santan San santangel i don't know <laughs> an embittered immortal familiar whose own secret could prove deadly for them both Ooh, i like this synopsis i don't even know when this is supposed to come out does it say april april 2024 april 9th 2024 all right Next up on the list is A Witch's Guide to Magical Innkeeping by Sangu Mandana and this is also a book that I have no idea what it's about but I read what is it called The Secret Society The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. I read that back in 2022 and I loved it. It was one of my favorite reads of the entire year so I am very excited to see what this author is going to do next. Like I said don't know what this is about so we're going to read it together. And it says an enchanting novel about a witch who has a second chance to get her magical powers and her life back on track. Sarah Swan was once one of the most powerful witches in Britain. Then she resurrected her great aunt Jasmine from the very recently dead, lost most of her magic, befriended a semi-villainous talking fox, and was exiled from her magical guild. Now she, slightly reluctantly and a bit grumpily, helps aunt Jasmine run an inn in Lancashire? I don't know if I said that right. When she learns about an old spell book that could hold the secret to restoring her power, she finds herself turning to Luke Larson, a gorgeous and icy historian who might be the only person who can help her unlock the book's mysteries. The fact that he also happens to be her one night stand from years ago is totally irrelevant. Running an inn, reclaiming lost magic, and trying not to fall in love is a lot for anyone. But Sarah is about to discover that she doesn't have to do it alone, and that the weird, wonderful family she's made might be the best magic of all. And this also comes out in April 2024, April 2nd to be exact. The next book on the list is a book from an autobuy author as far as I'm concerned. I will buy anything this woman writes at this point, and that is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I again have no idea what this book is about. I just saw that Abby Jimenez was writing a new book and I was like say less, here's my money, okay? I will read anything this woman writes, like I will read this woman's grocery list, like I do not care. I'm obsessed with this woman's writing. So let's find out what this book is actually about. It says a sharp and scintillating summer novel that will make readers laugh out loud and cry happy tears. Justin has a curse and thanks to a reddit thread it's now all over the internet. Every woman he dates goes on to find their soulmate 
the second they break up. Dang. Okay. When a woman slides into his DMs with the same problem, they come up with a plan. They'll date each other and break up. Their curses will cancel each other out and they'll both go on to find the love of their lives. It's a bonkers idea and it might just work. Dating Justin is just too good of an opportunity to pass up, especially when they get to rent an adorable cottage on a private island on Lake Minnetonka. It's supposed to be a quick fling just for the summer, but when Emma's toxic mother shows up and Justin has to assume guardianship of his three siblings, they're suddenly navigating a lot more than they expected, including catching real feelings for each other. What if this time fate has actually brought the perfect pair together? Hmm, interesting. One of the things that I love about Abby Jimenez's writing is that she tends to infuse very serious, heavy topics into a, what is otherwise a very lighthearted and comical book or story. So we'll see how that all plays out. The next book on the list is Where Sleeping Girls Lie. I am not going to attempt to say the author's name because I know that I'm going to butcher it. You can see what it says, it's on the cover. So I'm interested to read more of this author's work and I think I didn't read this synopsis but I think someone like it might have been like princess or somebody was like talking about this book or something and it sounded interesting but I don't remember what was said so we're gonna read the synopsis is my point. <laughs> it says a YA contemporary mystery in Where Sleeping Girls Lie a new girl comes to boarding school discovers dark secrets and cover-ups after her roommate disappears. Shade Hussein is starting her third year of high school this time at the prestigious Alfred Noble Academy boarding school after being homeschooled all her life. Misfortune has clung to her seemingly since birth, but even she doesn't expect her new roommate Elizabeth to disappear after Sade's first night, or for people to think that Sade had something to do with it. With rumors swirling around her, Sade catches the attention of the girls collectively known as the Unholy Trinity, and they bring her into their fold. Ooh, are we getting a secret society? Okay, so this is basically another Dark Academia book. So this is what this author does, apparently, because, like, Ace of Spades was also, like, kind of Dark Academia with, like, a secret society and took place at a school setting. Like, okay, I, I see that there's a trend here. There's a pattern here. Between learning more about them and playing catch-up in class, Sade already has so much on her plate. But when it seems people don't care enough about what happened to Elizabeth, it's up to she and Elizabeth's best friend, Baz, to investigate. And then a student is found dead. Dang. Okay, so one student goes missing, one student is now dead. All right, the school need to get it together. Come on now, you're about to lose your charter. The more Sade and Baz dig into Elizabeth's disappearance, the more she realizes there's more to Alfred Noble Academy and its students than she thought. Secrets lurk around every corner and beneath every surface. Secrets that rival even her own. I love me a good rich people of color story, okay? Y'all already know this. I've talked about this on my channel before. I love seeing rich POCs. It's a vibe. This one comes out in March of 2024, March 19th to be uh, exact. This should be a fun one. Next up is a book by an author that I have given five stars to. Haven't read their most recent release. I need to do that. Um, but the first couple of books that I read from that author, five stars. Not all of them, but like the series overall, five stars. And that is The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson, who was the author of the Good Girls Guide to Murder series, which if you guys have been following my channel, if you participated in the Get a Clue Readathon, then you already know is one of my favorite books of all time. It says, a new true crime fueled mystery thriller about a girl determined to uncover the shocking truth about her missing mother while filming a documentary on the unsolved case. Lights, camera, lies. Ooh, I love that. 18 year old Belle has lived her whole life in the shadow of her mom's mysterious disappearance. 16 years ago, Rachel Price vanished and young Belle was the only witness, but she has no memory of it. Rachel is gone, long presumed dead, and Belle wishes everyone would just move on. But the case is dragged up from the past when the Price family agreed to a true crime documentary. And then the impossible happens. Rachel Price reappears and life will never be normal again. Rachel has an unbelievable story about what happened to her. Unbelievable because Belle isn't sure it's real. If Rachel is lying, then where has she been all this time? And could she be dangerous? Okay. With the camera still rolling, Belle must uncover the truth about her mother and find out why Rachel Price really came back from the dead. One girl's search for the truth and the terror in finding out who your family really is. Okay, I'm sold. Sounds good to me. I'm excited. When does this come out? This comes out in April. Why is everything coming out in April? Jeez. April 2nd, 2024. The next two books I actually have arcs for. 
So I could start reading them now. I don't have time to read them right now because if you guys watch my December TBR then you already know that that's they're not on the list. But I definitely want to get them read ASAP because this one comes out in January of 2024 and it's Only If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham. This is another author that I have given five stars to when I read Flicker in the Dark which I believe was her debut novel. That was five stars and then I read what was the second one called? I can't think of what it's called but it was a story about the girl whose like son w went missing or whatever. That was also really good. It wasn't five stars but it was still really good. I think I gave it like four or four point something. I don't remember exactly what I gave it but it was good. One thing I will say the first two both um, have like the unreliable narrator trope which I thought worked really well in the first one. It worked okay in the second one and I'm just interested to see if this third one is also going to feature yet another uh, unreliable narrator. Also all of her unreliable narrators always are females which is not my favorite thing. So let's see what this one is about. It says Lucy Sharp is larger than life, magnetic, addictive, bold, and dangerous. Especially for Margot who meets Lucy at the end of their freshman year at a liberal arts college in South Carolina. Margot is the shy one, the careful one, always a sidekick and never the center of attention. When Lucy singles her out at the end of the year and asks her to room together, something in Margot can't say no. And so Margot finds herself living in an off-campus house with three other girls. Lucy the ringleader, Sloane a sarcastic one, and Nicole the nice one. The three of them opposite but also deeply intertwined. It's a year that finds Margot finally coming out of the shell she's been in since the end of high school when her best friend Eliza died three weeks after graduation. Margot and Lucy have become the closest of friends but by the middle of their sophomore year one of the fraternity boys from the house next door has been brutally murdered. Oh my gosh, <laughs> wasn't expecting that, okay. And Lucy Sharp is missing without a trace. A tantalizing thriller about the nature of friendship and belonging, about loyalty, envy, and betrayal. And this book comes out January 16th so I don't have a lot of time to read it. It's probably gonna be a book that I'm gonna have to prioritize like as soon as 2024 starts which is slightly in contradiction to what my goals for 2024 are. The next book on the list is also one that I have an arc for so I need to read it. I'm actually very excited to read this one. Um, not that I'm not excited to read the other one but this next one is the sequel to a book that I gave five stars just a couple months ago and that is Blood Justice by Terry J. Benton Walker. This is the second book to Blood Debts so I am extremely excited and also thrilled that I got an arc for this. I cannot wait for this. I think this also probably comes out in April if I'm not mistaken so I'm glad that I don't have to wait till April to get my hands on this book and I am not going to read the synopsis for you because I don't want to spoil it for myself. Also if you haven't read the first book some of the synopsis of the second book may spoil parts of the first book. I'm still like riding the high from the first book so I don't want to read it. I don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't read the first book. I do highly recommend that you go check out the first book. Matter of fact I'll read the synopsis for the first book in case you haven't read it. So it says 30 years ago a young woman was murdered, a family was lynched, and New Orleans saw the greatest magical massacre in history. In the days that followed a throne was stolen from a queen. On the anniversary of these brutal events Clement and Christina Trudeau, the 16 year old twin heir to the powerful magical dethroned family, are mourning their father and caring for their sick mother. Until by chance they discover their sick mother isn't sick, she's cursed. Cursed by someone on the very magic council their family used to rule. Someone who will come for them next. But if they have any hope of discovering who is coming after their family they'll have to find a way to trust each other and their family's magic all while solving, solving the decades old murder that sparked the still rising tensions between the city's magical and non-magical communities. And if they don't succeed New Orleans may see another massacre or worse. Dun dun dun! <laughs> Shout out to Paco from Bad Witch Books because he was the one that put me on to this series. Next up is Happily Never After by Lynn Painter, another author whose books I have given five stars to. So when I saw that this was coming out, again it's one of those authors where it's like I have enjoyed your book so much that just off the strength of your name I am willing to put this on my most anticipated releases without even knowing what this book is about. So now we're gonna find out. It says their name, the objectors, their job to break off weddings as hired. Wait what? Their dilemma, they might just be in love with each other. Okay that's a lot. Wait a minute. Their job is to break up other people's weddings. Did, is that what I just read? That is a wild job. Probably is a lot of fun though. When Sophie Steinbeck finds out just before her nuptials that her fiance has cheated yet again. Dang. Okay, that got dark. She desperately wants to call it off, but because her future father-in-law is her dad's cutthroat boss, yikes, okay, should have never done that. She doesn't want to be the one to do it. Her savior comes in the form of a professional objector 
whose purpose is to show up at weddings and proclaim the words no couple usually wants to hear at their ceremony, I object. He saves people from wasting their lives from hurting each other. He's a modern day hero and Sophie wants in. As Sophie and Max spend more time together, however, they realize that their physical chemistry is off the charts. Oh, okay. A groom to be hire Sophie to object, but his fiance is the woman who broke Max's heart. Oh my gosh. As Max wrestles with whether he can be a party to his ex getting hurt, Sophie grapples with the sudden realization that she may have fallen hard for her partner in crime. Wow. This sounds crazy. <laughs> it sounds so good. This has so much potential to be hilarious. Like this could be such a good rom-com. I am hoping that Lynn Painter delivers on this and she did not get my hopes up with this amazing synopsis. When does this come out? March 12th. Okay, two days after my birthday. Happy birthday to me. That's gonna be my gift to myself, okay? And last but not least is The Fury by Alex whatever Alex's last name is. I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never heard anybody say it, so I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. But uh, you see it on the screen. You know what it is, okay? You know what time it is. This is the author that wrote The Maidens, which was subpar. And this is also the author of The Silent Patient, which is on my TBR for December. Again, having no idea what this book is about, I put it on my list of most anticipated reads. Let's find out what this book is actually about. A masterfully paced thriller about a reclusive ex-movie star and her famous friends, okay, I like stuff about like celebrities in Hollywood, I'm into that, whose spontaneous trip to a private Greek island, okay, Greece is on my bucket list, It's upended by murder, yes. Three amazing things. Lana Farrar, I don't know how you say that name, is a reclusive ex-movie star and one of the most famous women in the world. Every year she invites her closest friends to escape the English weather and spend Easter on her idyllic private Greek island. I tell you this because you may think you know this story. It had all the necessary ingredients for press. A celebrity, a private island cut off by the wind, and a murder. We found ourselves trapped there overnight. Our old friendships concealed hatred and a desire for revenge. What followed was a game of cat and mouse, a battle of wits, Full of twists and turns, the night ended in violence and death, and one of us was found murdered. But who am I? My name is Elliot Chase, and I'm going to tell you a story unlike any you've ever heard. It has all the makings to be really good. I, I see all the potential. We'll see how the execution goes, but I see the potential. This comes out, or is set to come out, oh, January 16th. Okay, wasn't expecting that to come out so soon in the year. So basically, all the books I want to read are coming out between January and April. I don't have anything on this list that comes out after April. So I'm gonna have to probably do some more digging to find out like what is coming out in the second half of the year. Cause right now, everything that I wanna read, everything that I'm excited about is coming out in the first half of the year. It's kind of exciting though, because that means there's a whole another half of the year with unseen potential. Like who knows who's gonna be dropping books the second half of the year. But with that being said, those are all the books that I have on my list of most anticipated releases for 2024. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video if you liked it. Comment down below if you are also anticipating any of these books. Let me know what are you most looking forward to coming out for 2024. I'd love to know because there may be a lot of books that I missed. Subscribe if you are not already subscribed. I'd love to have you as part of the fam and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.